Welcome everyone, Mohawk Matt here once again, and we've got today Maria Thorpe. She is my new best friend. We've been friends for at least three minutes or so, so we're already making friendship bracelets and stuff. You know how it goes. Maria, how are you? I'm fine, Matt. Thank you so much for having me here today. I am really excited you are here to join us and here to tell us some great things that you are up to inside the Navy. So what we do in the human systems department is, I like to say, we take, a, take care of the human. So anything that the human touches or touches the human, we are responsible for. And we are also responsible for integrating the human into the platforms that they may fly in or work in. So things like night vision systems, uh, laser eye protection, all of the gear that the aviators wear, like their helmets, their breathing mask, yeah. uh, all of the flight suit gear, um, the ejection seat that gets them out of an aircraft in a situation, the breathing systems that they use to breathe at ha high altitudes. Yeah. So again, anything that the human needs in their work environment, we are responsible for providing as well as integrating that human into the systems that they are flying in or using. That is fantastic. That's really great that there's a whole team and teams of teams of people focusing on that because I think a lot of the attention gets to like the technology or the science or the kind of the, hey, did you see my new iPhone or did you see my new laser beam that just can do things? But it's, yes. if we're not thinking about the human, that's, so I think it's awesome that you guys are doing that. So, Absolutely. Maria, how did you get to where you are? Were you like five, 10 years old? And you're like, one day I'm going to take care of humans. How, how, I, how did not, I did not. I did not. Well, I went to school for engineering, electrical engineering, studying okay. control theory, digital signal processing, things like that. And while I was in school, I went to Drexel University and we have what's called a co-op program. So you go to school and then you come out and you go to work. Well, I had done a stint in industry, but uh, the Navy was looking for female who were studying engineering in college. And I, I got connected with the individual who was uh, involved in that, did the interview, and I was selected to be an, a woman, an engineer for the Navy. So that started my career, and I worked at Naval Sea Systems Command first, working on cruisers and destroyer-type ships. Uh, from there, I transitioned to work for the Air Force, working on aircraft for there, and then culmination, coming to work for NAVAIR. So I had the seaside and the air side, okay. and I put them together. So that's how I started working for the Navy. That's incredible. So you, you mentioned a few different sciences in there. I like, so some of the people we've talked to, they're kind of really focused deep, heavily focused on one kind of technology area, like maybe electrical or mechanical, but human mm -hmm. systems engineering, how many sciences are kind of involved? Like you're looking at around the spectrum, correct? Absolutely. It takes so much to take care of the human. I like to say, you know, often we think about hardware and software, but when you put the human in, it becomes hardware software and human and that gives you your total system capability so in my area i have folks that are traditional engineers like mechanical and electrical yes. uh aerospace i have uh, computer scientists computer engineers but i have also technicians that can work with the equipment that they will need the human will need to do their job i also have the medical side of the house. So I have medical doctors, I have PhDs, I have neuroscience, I have biomedical folks. So I have a wealth of people. I also have the neurological and the mental side. So I have psychologists, psychiatrists, physiologists. So just the whole component of the human and everything that it takes to make that human be its most effective is what we do in our group. Fantastic. And, and when you say I, it's not like you have them in your pocket. You all kind of work <laughs> together to this human systems mission, correct? Absolutely. I have approximately um, 200 plus folks in, that, uh, in my 
particular office in the Pax River area. Okay. And we also have about 25 facilities that they can go in and do their research and their testing that they need to do for the systems that we're developing. That's great. And so what are what is going on right now? Is there any specific new technology or are you guys using things from 80 years ago? What are you up to right now in human systems engineering? Well, of course, the human has an advance, but their ability to do things and the human is a complicated person. Yeah. And so some of the things we're looking at is the ability to be able to protect them in the different environments. So we're looking at things like sensor technology. We look at things like modeling, the digital human model. Uh, we're looking at things like advancing the capability and crash for the human to return safely. Um, we're doing research in things like autonomy awesome. and uh, artificial intelligence and different types of man, unmanned teaming. So okay. we're looking at the human from the area of where they are and where we see them going in the future. Um, Star Trek was one of my favorite shows when I was growing, growing up because Excellent. they would go to different places and different lands and the, 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 the crew always had to adapt. And yeah. so the human is an adaptable part of our system. And so when we provide them a product, we think we might have made it specifically for them, but inevitably there's some tweaking that we might have to do. And they're just so important for us to communicate with. So we have that going on, the communication, yes. the activity that goes along with that. So yes, lots of activity for the future, especially in cyber autonomy and uh, automation. That, that's excellent. One well, earlier you kind of mentioned People focus on kind of the software, the hardware. You focus on the humanware. Yes, the absolutely. Has hashtag humanware. I'm, I'm, I'm pointing that Hashtag humanware. And, and remember, there are also different things that they wear for different scenarios. So if you're going on, you know, a ship to do something, you might have a certain configuration. Or if you're involved in unmanned systems, you might have something different, different sure. items that you're dealing with. So that's what's most important is making sure that they have the capability that they need to do the job that we need them to do. Definitely. Fantastic. I'm glad people like you do that because I would just make sure they have sweet haircuts. That's all I care about really. <laughs> well, that's important too, because it has to fit under the helmet. True. True. I mean, maybe I need your team to make me a helmet that doesn't push my mohawk down, but lets it fly its flag, you know? Yeah, we'll, we'll make a special helmet just for you, and we'll elevate the part down the center um, to make sure that your your look is perfect. Perfect. And then, and then we got to make sure we put a mohawk on top, too, so you know it's me, obviously. Absolutely. I've seen some of those, but mainly <laughs> those are motorcycle things. Ah, uh, yeah. Probably not great inside of an airplane. Not always, not always. Uh, so, Maria, where where do you think this is going? Do you, are you seeing like the tech? I know you said some of the things you're kind of researching in, but yes. are you? Where's Maria think it's going? You're like one day we're probably going to have like biosensors in our brains so we can just know yes. immediately. Or where do you yes. think this is going? Uh, we want to take it as far as we can. We're looking at biometrics as a uh, just looking at the whole human. What are the capabilities? How can we make the human uh, just an integral part of the system? And um, for the future, we're looking at things like quantum technology, sensing, computing, how much data can a human handle? How much can we give to the individual in order to keep the situational awareness of what's going on around the individual so that they have all that they need, again, to do the works. So we're looking at artificial intelligence, machine yep. learning, neural networks, uh, you know, kinetic and non-kinetic opportunities. Sure. Uh, we're looking at the electronic warfare, full spectrum of items. But Very basically, cool. we want to have secure communications for them to talk and a network that we can transmit and do the work we need over cyber. Definitely. So earlier, you kind of mentioned the... Uh 
uh, you had some the medical side because it's about the human, right? Reading, biometric yes. side. How how similar is that to like my iWatch or my Fitbit or something that can kind of read my pulse? Um, it's probably yes. a lot more advanced than that. Well, actually, you know, we do some collaboration efforts and you have to remember we're in a different environment. We're at sea, the Navy's at sea. So some things that you might be able to use in your day-to-day -day life might yeah. not be able to sustain in some of the environments that our aviators uh, have to get involved in. Sure. So we look at new technologies and we integrate them into how we need the system to work. So some of the technologies that's in your iWatch or some other devices that you use, we can use them just in a different way. And we have to make sure, again, that they are usable in the environments that we expect them to be in. Fantastic, fantastic. Maria, you've worked for the Navy and Marine Corps for quite a while. What, mm -hmm. what, do you have any cool experiences that you've had? You know, that's what I think kept me here so long is that I've had such a wonderful opportunity um, as I spoke earlier, I've had a chance to go out on naval ships. Mm -hmm. I've had a chance to be involved in different aircraft, unmanned air systems. When I was out testing, I would get involved in, you know, working with the aviators, being able to go out and meet the pilots where they are. Um, one of my, I guess, favorite things I've done is, you know, being up in the aircraft doing jump tests, testing a system. How do you get out of the aircraft? Like you, um, you, you were jumping? I, I had friends. Okay, You know, okay. tandem. Um, but also, you can have an opportunity to be a test subject in the human systems department. So Ooh. you get to actually be a part of some of the products that may be coming out for our humans in the fleet. That's so awesome. that's exciting. And they always we're always looking for females because we need that data point so that was an exciting part being involved in some of the testing as it relates to um g loss of consciousness and just different products that come yes. out into the into the uh that the aviators use yes see that's where i think we could get along maria i think <laughs> what's really missing is that testing of how mohawks dynamically fly through the air Absolutely. You know, uh, one of the things that I have is, you know, the lay term is uh, dummies. But the, oh. anth the, the anthropometric uh, machines that we use for testing, and they're instrumented, and they can identify things as we're testing. So we don't always have to use a human, we can use the different types of mannequins, instrumented mannequins oh, okay. that are the body structure, the type that we that a human would be, but we're able to do things with them, like put them on a horizontal accelerator and shoot them across the room, or put them in an ejection tower so we can demonstrate and simulate an ejection from an aircraft, or put them in a wind stream, in a wind tunnel, so we can see the effects of ejecting out of an aircraft. So we do use our mannequins to do those things and they're instrumented so we can get the data that we need without using a human. The human is the final step. Okay, that's fantastic. That was a nice save there. I thought you were calling me a dummy. Absolutely not. <laughs> ah, well, I mean, you never know. College, you had to pay for, pay some bills sometimes, so <laughs> that didn't make it work. Yeah. Yes. So Maria, is there anything else you want us to know about the kind of what we're up to with human systems engineering or what you're up to in your field? Well, as I said earlier, there is so much going on with the different platforms that we have and looking in an unmanned world and how the human, because there is a human in an unmanned system, not going to tell you where, but they're there. <laughs> and the key is now we're looking at teaming of a, a machine and a human in a different environment. And again, utilizing our autonomy systems to integrate with the human, um, human machine integration, interfacing. Um, how are we going to get the best out of the human in the yes. environments that we need? So we will continue to look at those items as we come 
into the future and being in the environments and looking for ways that we can keep them safe. Fantastic. I love being kept safe. That's, that's uh, great. Yes, absolutely. So that's excellent. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Maria. I really enjoyed talking to you today. Well, thank you so much, Matt. It has been extremely exciting uh, being able to just share some of the things that, you know, young folks might be interested in. Yeah. Again, exciting times to be in the Navy right now. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Thank you again. So thank you. You're welcome. You all heard it there. There's some really cool stuff that isn't just technology. A lot of the Navy and the Marine Corps is focused on the human, on the person, on you, whether you are helping develop it or whether you are the one that may use it one day as a service member or someone else. Because a lot of things that we develop become things in the commercial world. So we're really excited to hear what you guys have to think about the human systems engineering side, where you think it is and where you think it's going. And most importantly, where you are going to take it because you'll probably take it to the next level. So thanks for tuning in and have a great day.